thanks for watching and welcome to our 10th way of doing the Gaussian Integral. It's Gaussian Integral X, okay? <laughs> and today is another one of those formulas where I don't derive the Gaussian Integral, but I'll show you where it appears. And this time, we'll show that it naturally appears in the Fourier transform. And by the way, I always forget, but this is not my idea. It's all based on Keith Conrad's notes, which are excellent. You should check them out. So, first of all, what is the Fourier transform? Again, Fourier, not Fourier, okay? <laughs> so, f hat of xi, the Fourier transform is just the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x e to the minus i x xi dx. And notice, we are integrating with respect to x, so this indeed becomes a function of psi. And what I'm not gonna show today is the following fact. So the claim is, or indeed will show, that if you take the Fourier transform twice, then turns out naturally it becomes a function of x, it's just equal to two pi f of x. And I'm claiming that this constant 2 pi is not random, it's precisely the Gaussian integral in this form. I think minus x squared over 2 dx squared. So that's what we want to show. And by the way, why should it be true that this identity holds? Because notice the following. So why? Well, first of all, you know, f hat of xi, that's just the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x e to the minus i x xi dx. And therefore, there's something called the Fourier inversion formula, which tells you that f of x, you can write actually f of x in terms of the Fourier transform. It's equal to 1 over 2 pi integral from minus infinity to infinity of f xi, f hat of xi, e to the i x xi, d xi. So we, in this case, we integrate the Fourier transform with respect to this, and because we're integrating with respect to xi, this means that it's a function of x in the end. And there is a reason why here we put minus and here we put plus, because this is like the conjugate of that. So it makes sense. And again, it turns out this constant is 1 over 2 pi. And we show this. And in particular, suppose you do this again. Then, on the one hand, f hat hat of x, that's equal to, that's f hat of hat of x, and that's equal to integral from minus infinity to infinity of f hat of xi e to the minus x e to the minus i x xi d xi. That's just the definition of the Fourier transform. On the other hand, if you compare it with this, right, 1 over 2 pi of this, this becomes precisely 2 pi times, instead of f of x, because we're doing minus x, it becomes f of uh, minus x. Okay. And um, yeah, perhaps I should, yeah. let me see. Uh, oh, should it should be f of x. Uh, so here probably should be f of minus x. Yeah. So if you take the Fourier transform twice, you get 2 pi f of minus x. And 
It follows from this formula, but the question is, where in the world does this 2 pi come from? So, and I'm claiming it comes from the Gaussian integral. So, step two. Consider the following function. f of x equals e to the minus a x squared, where a is positive. And turns out this function will help us in solving our problem. And in particular, notice we can, of course, calculate the derivative. So f prime of x, that's minus 2ax e to the minus ax squared. And let's just take the Fourier transform of this. So let's Fourier that. We get hat of f prime of x equals to hat of minus 2ax e to the minus ax squared. And for this, we just need a couple of identities which relate the Fourier transform of derivatives. So note, if you take the Fourier transform of f prime, by definition, that's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f prime of x e to the minus i x xi dx. And the nice thing is, you have a derivative, so it turns out you can just integrate by parts. And let's just assume f goes to zero very quickly at infinity. And this is true, at least for this function. So in other words, those the boundary terms of zero, and you're left with integral from minus integral from minus infinity to infinity of differentiate that with respect to x, so minus i xi f of x e to the minus i x xi dx but this minus cancels out and you get i xi times the integral of f of x e to the minus i x xi which is i xi f hat of xi it almost sounds like this game i spy except we have i xi <laughs> I xi of Fourier transform. That's one thing. So if you take the Fourier transform of the derivative, you just get this extra factor here, which, by the way, makes it so nice to solve differential equations with Fourier transforms, because they just turn differentiation into multiplication. It's very neat. On the other hand, let's see what happens if you take the derivative of a Fourier transform. might get something interesting here as well. So I guess set, also another note, if you take the derivative of a Fourier transform, by definition, it's the derivative of so the integral of e to the, so of f of x, sorry, um, take the derivative of the Fourier transform, so f of x, e to the minus i x xi dx, and you take the derivative with respect to xi, not x, be careful, and assuming you can put the derivative inside the integral, this becomes minus i x, f of x, e to the minus i x xi dx, and notice that's precisely the Fourier transform of the function xf. So minus i times xf xi. In other words, you can sort of reverse this and you get that the Fourier transform of xf is i times the derivative of the Fourier transform of f. All right, why did I do this? Because notice that's precisely the two ingredients we need here because this will turn out to be just i xi times the Fourier transform 
And this will be, you know, minus 2a times probably the derivative of the Fourier transform. So if you use those two formulas into this formula, then we get the following. So again, we found that f prime equals to, again, uh, Fourier transform of minus 2a xf. That's just f, I get. And now, by our two formulas, we get that this becomes, so i xi f hat equals to minus 2a i f hat prime, which you can simplify to just saying f hat prime. Prime equals to minus 1 over 2a times xi f hat. Which is fantastic because it turns out, notice this is just an ODE. Once you solve this ODE, which we'll do, you can actually just solve for f hat, which is nice. So in other words, we'll be able to figure out the Fourier transform of this function e to the minus a, blah, blah, blah. So, let's do that. So what was it, uh, was that step, yeah, step three maybe. Well, let's solve this ODE which in calculus is just the same as the ODE, y prime equals one minus one over two a times x y. And I get back to single variable calculus, so y prime over y equals to minus one over two a x, and then ln of absolute value of y prime equals to minus one over two a x, anti-differentiate, so ln of y is minus 1 over 4a, 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 okay, x squared plus a constant, and then you can just solve for y, so uh, if you want y equals to e to the minus 1 over 4a x squared times e to the constant, I don't know why today, the lines are turning out very quickly. So, but again, e to the c is just another constant, and I'll come back to that. So then y is plus or minus e to the c, e to the minus x squared over 4a. And again, c is just an arbitrary constant, so plus or minus e to the c is another arbitrary constant. Well, I'll just write down as c, so we get c e to the minus x squared over 4a. Which tells us, again, what was y was our Fourier transform. It tells us that f hat of xi is c e to the minus xi squared over 4a. So in other words, we found the Fourier transform of the function um, e to the minus a x squared which is good, it's a concrete formula, and you'll see in a second how does that solve us that, because notice this almost looks like the Gaussian integral, almost looks like e to the minus x squared, but let's just transform that using a specific value for a, so in this case, well let a just be one half, so let's see, so I guess step four maybe, let a be one half, then f of x equals to e to the minus x squared over two. Remember, f was e to the minus a x squared. And we've just shown that the Fourier transform is at least just a constant times this, which becomes in this case constant e to the minus xi squared over 2. 
And here's why it's nice, and here's also why we chose this constant, not just to get the Gaussian integral, but notice in this case, the Fourier transform equals to a constant times the function itself. So in other words, I just realized it's kind of cool, um, e to the minus x squared over two, it sort of the, plays the role of e to the x, but in the Fourier transform world because e to the x is a function whose derivative equals to itself, but this function is a function whose Fourier transform equals at least a constant times itself. All right, and now what we would like to do, let's just plug in, you know, since this works for any xi, let's plug in xi equals to zero, then we get f hat of zero, on the one hand, we get f hat of 0 equals c times f of 0. But f of 0 is just 1. So we get that e is equals to c. On the other hand, what is the definition of f hat of 0? Well, the definition is just the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x e to the minus i x zero dx. You just think plugging xi equals to zero, and that equals to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus x squared over two dx. Which is precisely the Gaussian integral. So this constant c is just the Gaussian integral, and let's call it k because it's not quite the standard one. The standard one is e to the minus x squared. Okay, and now what we want to show is we want to solve our problem and say that in the, if you take the Fourier transform twice, then you get precisely this constant, the Gaussian integral. So, step five. Again, so we have, we've just shown that f hat is c times f, and let's solve for the Gaussian integral now. So then f hat hat becomes c f hat, but we've just shown that f hat is c f, so c c f, so it's c squared f of x. On the other hand, by our formula at the very beginning, we know that the double Fourier transform just gives you 2 pi f of minus x. Let's take that as a given and again show that 2 pi comes from the Gaussian integral. So 2 pi f of minus x equals to c squared f of x. Well, and we're almost done because this holds for every x. So let x be 0. Then we get 2 pi f of 0 equals to c squared f of 0. But what was f? It was our e to the minus x squared over 2. So f of 0 equals to 1. So we get 2 pi equals to c squared. So c squared is 2 pi, so c is squared of 2 pi, and we are done because it holds, you know, c is just k, so k equals to squared of 2 pi. Or if you'd like reverse engineering this, if, you know, um, the Gaussian integral is equal to this value, then this value actually gives you the constant in that, uh, I guess, Fourier inversion formula or something. Um, and also, you know, just to conclude this argument, if it's hold for every function, then it must also hold for the function e to the minus x squared over two, and therefore we get this constant, which is related to the Gaussian integral. 
All right, so if you like that and you want to see more math and more Gaussian integrals, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.